day, viewers and listeners. Hey, it's Ed Fox with Nash, Nash, blah, 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 blah. That's all, folks, with Nashville2.com. Um, you're Nashville 2, so what's your story? And my special guest, well, I think he's special. We'll find out in a little bit. Uh, my special guest today is uh, Ryan, is it Sap? Did we say Sap or is it? Sap. Ryan Sap. Yes, okay. sir. Did you cop some flack about that at school when you were growing up? I've had a couple of uh, jokes thrown at me, you know, tree sap. Uh, I've been asked if I was related to Warren Sap numerous times. I, so, you know, I usually roll with it and tell him I've seen him at the family reunion once or twice, but I, he didn't share any his football skills with me. There you go. See, and I'm not a I'm not an American footballer, but I am signed up. I got free tickets. A friend of mine uh, has got season tickets to the Titans, and the Chiefs are coming into town this weekend, I think. Is it the 21st? Yes. So they're here. So we're recording this October 21st, and they're here this weekend. And um, I'm not a big American football supporter. I'm still learning about it. But uh, we're going to go to a game, and, and that's going to be a, a, a life experience for me. I'll have to wash the shirt, and I'll wear my American flag shirt. And they say, you don't sound like you're from around here, boy. And I'll say, uh, no, I'm from the deep south. I speak with that's a right. southern accent. I say, g'day, y'all. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> back to the show. So, uh, Ryan, Ryan, uh, how long have you been in Nashville? I've been in Nashville uh, for two and a half years. Oh, okay. Well, cool. So which part of town is your domain? So I have, since I've moved to Nashville, I have been over here in East Nashville, uh, about eight miles from downtown, not into Madison, probably, uh, you know, a couple of miles before you get into Madison. So really still, I'm in the Davidson County area. Okay. So we, I'm going to ask you some more questions about what fun stuff that you found to do on, at Nash, in Nashville or, or things that you like uh, about Nashville. But let's get started a little bit. What brought you to Nashville? And that, I guess, is a lead into tell us a little bit, give us the overview of what you do. Yeah. So I moved here on business. Um, I, I've worked for a company called the Magnolia Golf Group now for going on four years. Um, it was actually my first job out of college. Uh, it was started in 1999, and what we are is essentially a one-stop shop for charity golf tournaments. Uh, we partner with about 250 golf tournaments annually, um, and basically what we do is we work with the nonprofits to help them maximize their fundraising by creating an incredible experience at their golf tournament that can uh, can change people's lives at the end of the day. So I'd say we, uh, we try to give that charity golf tournament a PGA-style feel. And, um, but to answer your question, an opportunity arose to move up here. We were doing a lot of business in Middle Tennessee, um, and I had the opportunity to come up here and manage that book of business. And uh, at 24 years old, moving to Nashville didn't seem like a, a very uh, tough thing to do. You know, it was actually more exciting than anything. So like right. a lot of people are doing these days, I, uh, I, I packed my bags and I made my way up here to uh, Music City. Well, yeah, uh, guilty as charged, right? You know, which Australians love to say because that's, you know, convict company, so guilty as charged. Yeah, us too. I spent 30 years in, in Kansas, loved Kansas. Um, I built my own private cricket field up there, but have moved to Nashville for business. And I, I'm loving the people. I'm loving the environment. Um, and so I thought we'd start doing this Nashville 2 show and, and find out a little bit about those people that maybe aren't recognized, you know, because your story is, is part of Nashville as well. And you are the guys, aren't you the guys that put like the big LEDs out when we're playing golf and it looks like we're playing in the PGA? Isn't that, isn't that that's you? That's right. That's right. We call it putting your name up in lights. We want yeah. those, those charity golfers, those guys that play in, you know, 10, 15 charity golf tournaments a year to feel like Tiger Woods or Phil Mickelson or Bryson DeChambeau. Uh, so yeah, we, we basically, we've got a fleet of eight of those mobile LED screens that we bring out to charity golf tournaments. Uh, one, to increase the overall experience, right? So we can put the live scores up there. We can put their name up in lights. We get their picture and post it on our website. Um, but then also to provide the, uh, the charity or the nonprofit with an opportunity or a platform that they can maximize their fundraising with, right? So right. Uh, to really bring advertising on either side. That's right. right. You guys, you, I was reading on your website, right? You know, and we yeah. talked a little bit before this. Um, yeah. But you guys can also like do movie nights. You can really do any events with those screens. If you can help put together a whole golf tournament. And I think you can do it a la carte, like do different things for a, a, somebody that's doing a charity golf tournament. Or you could do the whole shebang, right? If they wanted you to come in and manage the whole thing. Am I, am I getting it right? You got it. You got, I mean, I think you could probably work for Ma You could probably work for Magnolia if you wanted to start another, uh, start another line of business, but no, you're absolutely right. So basically, basically the way a golf tournament's broken down is into uh, four parts. So we provide, and like you said, it, we are a la carte. We, uh, we provide 
uh, custom signage. We do player gifts and awards. So we have accounts with Nike, Under Armour, Adidas. Uh, we're a sub distributor for Yeti where we can take and customize these Yeti Ramblers that you see everywhere you go, whether you're in church or on vacation, and we can put sponsorship logos on them. Go ahead. Uh, dad joke insert. I've never had one of them Yeti. No, no, need some work. Okay. Okay. We won't even fine cut tune, that out. Fine tune, fine tune. Hey, but I'll never let you not try it one. You've okay, been too good you. at it. So, you know, what's 99 out of 100? Um, so, yes, like I was saying, and then the LED screens, and, and we do also offer a complete management package where we work with the client or tournament director and committee to uh, from start to finish. It's usually about an eight-month process where we oversee committee meetings. Um, the When, you know, they're bringing in prospective sponsors, we keep track of who's knocking on doors in your committee, um, what sponsors we have coming in, setting up the volunteer booth and registration areas. And then on tournament day, we actually come out there, put the signage that you have ordered with Magnolia out on the course uh, in a professional level, if I may add, and uh, help you execute the tournament. And then following, we bring it or take it all up and inventory it in our warehouse for you to use again next year at no cost. And I, and I love it. I did search out the website. Uh, give us your website right now, and, and you can send it to me in an email to put in the notes, but what is your website that they can go to if they want to find out more? It's www.magnoliagolfgroup.com. Okay, magnoliagolfgroup.com. Um, so that, that's that's great information to have. Uh, I, You know, so you and I have talked a little bit. We're in the same networking group, and and uh, I, I'm always thinking of business ideas. I'm thinking that there's a business for bad golfers, bad golfers. And so you hire us to go to your charity tournament and, and be the worst player on the team so that we make everybody else look good. I you think know, people. Uh, that's not bad. People ask me all the time, as much as I'm at the golf course, like, you know, they're always saying, well, you must be like a scratch golfer. And I say, yeah, when I hit the golf ball, I scratch my head and wonder where it is. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not kidding you. It takes a lot of balls to play golf the way I do. Hey, hey <laughs> you bring in the dad jokes. That's good. Yeah. I had to come prepared for the that's, Nashville too. That's right. Exactly. I was, I was telling somebody today, I, I like uh, Pokemon. I grew up playing uh, my kids grew up and we played Pokemon cards together and I used to run tournaments and, and two of my favorite dad jokes are Pokemon jokes right now. It's like, uh, why don't you shower with a Pokemon? Because he Pikachu, <laughs> right? And then how do you get Pikachu on the bus? You Pokemon. So I've been, having, I've been having a lot of fun with those two. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. So you've been in Nashville a couple of years. Uh, you've been in East Nashville. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you have a favorite hangout like, you know, if somebody wants to stalk you, where, where's you, are, are you a drinker? I, well, I was going to say it. I'm, I'm 26, just turned 26. So, you know, I've got a lot of friends from Atlanta that come up. They want to, they want to enjoy the weekend, right. uh, the downtown area. I'd be lying if I said I haven't consumed a couple of beverages since I've right. been up here. Yep. Um, I'll say in East Nashville, one of the places I, I'm a big sports, I'm, I'm a sports fanatic. I like sports bars. You know, if, if you take me to a restaurant that offers a cold beverage and they've got 10 plus TVs in there, I'm, I'm usually going to stick around for a while. Okay. Uh, there's a place called Nobles uh, that is right down the street from me. It's a, a really awesome sports bar. They got great food, great drinks, it's an awesome atmosphere. Um, and, and, you know, I'm a little extroverted. I like to, I, I've done it all in Nashville, you know, from right. Broadway to, to Midtown. Um, but there is a, a little hole in the wall place off of Broadway called the Wild Beaver. Okay. And uh, that is that is usually a common stopping point for when friends come up here and are visiting from out of town because we get up on that stage and sing a little karaoke for oh. uh, all the tourists enjoying the downtown festivities. So exactly. I'd say, yeah, Nobles and, and, and the Wild Beaver, those are two places that, uh, that I probably enjoy the most as awesome. of now. So other than drinking and hanging out with friends, what do you do when you're not working? Because you must you must stay all day on the golf course if you're helping manage a tournament. I do. Uh, honestly, we, I, I like to travel quite a bit now. You know, I still go back and forth to Atlanta, but I just got back from Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, hey, went out this, is, this is the Nashville 2 show, Ryan. Not the, okay. not the Scottsville, Scottsdale, Scott, <laughs> whatever. Because uh, now I'm just I'm just kidding I'm just kidding. But if you're or let's keep it on Nashville because I know we can okay. talk about other places and I love to travel as well. Um, and Nashville used to be one of my go-to places. I, I'd love coming down here and bringing bringing family from Australia and, and show them the Parthenon and they're like, uh, 
what the hell is the Parthenon doing in friggin' Nashville? Right. You know, now, well, now, I've now, done the Parthenon. I've done the Parthenon, and that was a really cool experience. That was a really cool. Yeah, experience. it was. Um, you know, Australians use more colorful words than that, but I, I can't use it on the show. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's worth going to have a look at. I enjoyed that. Uh, my, my sister-in-law was down here a couple of weeks ago and, uh, she's like, Oh, where else can we go? Where else can we go? And I'm like, well, it's like nine o'clock at night. We can't get in anywhere. And Alice said, Oh, we're going to drive right by Vanderbilt and the Parthenon and stuff. Why don't we just like drive around it? And she's like, Oh, this is cool. What's this doing here? So yeah. then you got to get on Google and do some research and figure out what it's doing. So, but anyway, that, that was cool. So when you're not drinking, and you're not traveling, and you're around Nash Nashville. Is there anything else uh, that you uh, that you do, or places that you like to go? Yeah, absolutely. Well, like I said earlier, I'm 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 a really big sports guy. I've, I've always been around sports, so you know, going to a Nashville Sounds game is an awesome experience. Okay, uh, I'm going to show my ignorance. Is that basketball? Okay. Football. That's uh, minor. I'm sorry, football. Oh. Minor league baseball. It's minor, minor league, league baseball. baseball. Okay, so sorry, I, I knew the. Is it the Predators? The Predators, that's the Predators, hockey. Right, and mm -hmm. I know the, the Titans and yep. uh, that's Nashville Sounds. Nashville Sounds, that's okay. minor league baseball, AAA. Okay, okay. and so they uh, – yeah, I like AAA ball. We used to have the Wichita Wing Nuts. But, again, yes. this is about Nashville, not about Wichita. So uh, the Sounds, I'm going to write that down. We'll have to go. You'll have to take me one day. Yeah, I'd be uh, happy to. Cheap, cheap tickets, good experience. Honestly, uh, a lot of people enjoy going to minor league games, you know, for the experience more than more than a major league baseball game. Right, I get that. Okay, so you're a sports nut. I think we figured that out. So, uh, you know, I'm a cricket nut. So we'll have yeah. to play a game of cricket someday, and I'll, I'll show okay. you. How I wouldn't even know where to start, so I'm relying heavily on you with that. So there is – there, and I've said this on the show before, there is 50 – Nashville cricket teams or within the metro area. So they've got three fields down at Lewisburg. And then mm -hmm. is it White's Creek? Is it White's? It sounds right. White's Creek, I think it is. There's a cricket field out there. And then there's another cricket field somewhere in town that I haven't found yet. But um, but there's 50 cricket teams across across Nashville, which is uh, pretty cool. I need to get back into playing at 54. You know, you're playing with all these guys from British Commonwealth countries, normally India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa. Uh, I'll get in trouble for whoever I left off, but you know, oh, the, the English too, like the odd Englishman yeah. plays football, plays cricket. They invented the game, but they've forgotten how to play it is what I like to say. <laughs> um, but then they go ahead and win the World Cup. Like they've won the World Cup for the first time ever a few years ago. So, okay. So definitely, definitely sports, definitely great places to go downtown. Um, what else do we need to know about you, Ryan? About me? Um well, cool. as, single? I am not single. No, I, I, I've had a off girlfriend. Uh, yep. Off the market. Off the Good. market. Um, Kids. Let's see. What else do you need? To, you, I've told you I'm a sports fanatic. I moved yep. up here. I've enjoyed the city. Uh, I'm always interested in meeting new people. You ex actually, uh, you know, we spoke really for the first time yesterday at B&I. Right. Yep. And uh, next thing I know, I'm on the Nashville2.com YouTube video. So I'm, hey. I'm, I'm always excited to meet new people, hear people's stories. Um, you know, I just I oh. think that's really all there is to all there is to know about me. You know, okay. cats or dogs? It. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Yeah. Never a cat. Okay. Never a cat. I'm, I'm probably going to get some backlash for that. Huh? Yeah, you've, you've just lost half your audience yeah. right there. <laughs> So, so of the three people we have that watch the show, one and a half just left. Yeah. So, that guy from Ukraine. He's, that's right. Yeah, he's going to unsubscribe now. <laughs> okay, so you're a dog guy. Okay. Uh, so you liked my dad joke for the dog. You know, I didn't do it, so they won't know what it is. But that was pretty funny. I like that one. <laughs> um, so, Ryan, if somebody is interested in having you help out with one of their charity golf tournaments, what's mm -hmm. the best way for them to reach out to you? Well, they can go to our website and, uh, you know, there is a tab on there that has my contact on it. Um, or they can reach me at rsap, R-S-A-P-P, -P, at magnoliagolfgroup.com. And, um, and it doesn't really matter what size your charity tournament is or if you're looking to start one up and you just want to brainstorm ideas of how you can really maximize your fundraising in a first-year tournament. Or you've had your tournament for 10 years and it's plateaued and you're looking for new ways to uh, continuously drive and get over that plateau and raise more money for your tournament. Um, I'm, I'm happy to consult with you and, and, you know, just reach out to me at, at that email address. Awesome, Ryan. Hey, I really appreciate you being on the show. 
and uh, it's fun to get to know you through our networking group. If anybody is interested in visiting Ryan and my networking group, it's uh, BNI Middle Tennessee Williamson County chapter, and we meet at uh, Odor 100 on Wednesdays, like uh, 7:15. We start. Uh, Got to be there on time. Uh, there's about 50 ish uh, people. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a great group. Yeah, it really. Lord. And we'd love to have you come visit. Uh, just reach out to me through uh, through my email, efox at tradebank.com. And uh, we'll get you we'll get you set up to come. If you're if you're a business owner, you want to come to this, or if you work for a business that is looking for new uh, contacts, uh, then you definitely should come check us out at BNI. Um, okay, so you, let me see. Do you have any other dad jokes prepared that you didn't get to use? We will do one each. And I told we, one, you only I don't. I, don't. I came prepared with two, and I and I used them both right okay. there in the middle of the universe. Okay. Well, you, you can. How about you? I know you've got a lot up your sleeve. You you use mine and yours. Okay. Well, the, the thing for me is that, you know, um, I read an article that said the average three-year-old cry uh, laughs 200 times a day. My argument is they cry about the same as well. But anyway, but so they, they laugh about 200 times a day and the average 40-year-old only laughs 12. Wow. You know, like most statistics off the internet, Abraham Lincoln said you can't trust him, you know. <laughs> Um, so I got that quote off the internet too. But uh, but the point remains to be true is we don't laugh enough in life. And laughter, Reader's Digest has been telling us, I think, for 100 years now that, re, uh, that laughter is the best medicine. So um, so I find it easy. Dad jokes are just, you know, if I can get an eye roll, a groan or whatever. Uh, so I have a TikTok channel. Let's promote that. We'll do an ad tied into this. So let me see if I can find my virtual background with my TikTok. There you go. Special Ed Fox dad jokes on TikTok. You got to check that out. Now, can I go back to Nashville too? I'll leave that up there. TikTok, TikTok. I need the Jeopardy music. Do, 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 do. You want me to sing it No, no, no. It's okay. Well, yeah, you do karaoke. You don't want me doing karaoke. Um, but one of my favorite dad jokes right now is I was watching a, um, a Netflix documentary the other night. It wasn't on dad jokes, but it was on how they build warships. Uh, riveting. I know, right? And they talked about how the Norwegian Navy is putting uh, barcodes on the sides of the warship so that when they come back to port, uh, they can Scandinavian. I know. I, that's very clever. I didn't write it. I don't know who did it. So you got they got their Pokemon jokes. They got those jokes. So that's good enough for today. Thanks for being on. You've been great. Uh, uh, been a great guest. Uh, and, and if you would like to appear on the Nashville 2 show, if you've got a business or something that you would like to talk about on Nashville 2, do you know those guys that mentor other people and that they're working hard with them and maybe they're not getting any recognition? Maybe there's a favorite nonprofit that you would like to promote. Have them, uh, have them reach out to me. We'd love to have them on the show and, and hear about what they're doing and expose them to the rest of Nashville and, you know, where else, you know. Um, so uh, that's, that's all I got. Hey, Ryan, thanks a lot. And we'll catch up with you, um, next week. Thank you, Mr. Ed. I, I appreciate you having me on. There you go. That's another dad joke that people over 40 will get the Mr. Ed reference.